How's everything going, Alberta? Here I am. It's uh, Doug Crashley from Crash Conditioning, uh, part of the Team Alberta Development Squad. We're going to throw out some video over the next few weeks, uh, helping everybody get their, their work done at home, helping everybody stay mentally and physically healthy and well while we're at home in self-isolation. So today I'm going to uh, introduce a few things in the video. First, you're going to see some mobility exercises from my group, some things that help kind of keep our tissue healthy and so means of rolling out even if you don't have a roller i'm sure everybody has a baseball a cross ball a golf ball or even a uh even a rolling pin so there's ways to do things um but that's going to be a separate video and then the second portion of the movement portion of this today for me is going to be just a little bit of movement strength and mobility we're going to focus on all body stuff today and body weight but then we're also going to show you ways that we can add resistance moving forward Hips. Traps. Lats. Pecs. Paraspinal. So now that we're done the soft tissue work using the lacrosse ball or whatever you have at home, a baseball, a rolling pin, like I said, lacrosse golf ball, uh, you can get a lot of that stuff done with things that we have at home. Something that allows some of the hard surface that allows us to get into some tight areas and kind of flush out or I want to use the term iron out some bunching of our in our sort of our muscular system. So let's talk about how we're going to move today. I'm going to show you right off the bat. I'm at home at my basement here in Calgary. I thought that'd probably be the most appropriate place to shoot this video and kind of keep it live like we're working out together and hanging out, keeping it real here in self-isolation 2020. But we're gonna work on things today. I'm gonna try to do as much as I can barefoot. Why? Because I wanna have healthy feet, healthy arches, and healthy ankles. We get locked up in boots the whole hockey season. We're wearing shoes all the time. Sometimes they have lifts that are high or they're lower. They have limited flexion that allows for your, for your ankles to move. We want to get it to be as nice and fluid and natural as possible. As you can see, I can sit pretty comfortably into a flat foot position. My hips are open. I'm fairly tall through my torso and my shoulders. This is a position I like to work on all the time. And it starts with our ankles and both of our ankles. So we've worked on a little bit of rolling out our feet. Now what I want to do is I want to set us up so that we're working on kind of that mobility moving forward, which is great for goalies and as well skaters. We're just moving forward, you'll see. My knee is past my toe. As much as we heard back in the 90s that you, your knees should never cross your toes, completely incorrect. Nice flexion through our ankle allows for a great squatting position. So great squatting position. The minute that our ankles stop moving forward, our hips are not able to drop. And now for me to get back in the camera angle, I have to lean. To be in a nice skating position, you wanna have forward movement, nice hips, shoulders back, eyes up. Same as a goalie, same position, and you wanna be able to have that mobility. So for that, I like to work a ton on getting those ankles to move correctly by having my feet, ankles, all the way up, start as most of my days, getting healthy and getting warm. So let's work. Again, we're gonna do 10 or so reps, moving forward, nice and controlled, nice and simple. Then from there, squatting down in one motion, nice and easy, all the way through. What you're gonna see with my feet is I wanna have my toes spread out and kind of comfortable. So think about having your, your splaying of your fingers and toes. You have big contact with your big toe, your pinky toes putting pressure in your heel. 
And now I try to suction up or pull the towel up. I'm not trying to curl my toes, I'm trying to suction my arch straight up. That's gonna give me a nice hip movement. And I'm gonna work side to side, forward, backward. Side to side, forward, backward, moving through. Yeah, I feel that a little bit in my legs. Yeah, I've been sitting on the couch, working on homework or, or schoolwork or, or work at the desk way too long these last couple weeks. This is day 22 in self-isolation, but we're gonna work on this, it's gonna get better. So work on those ankles to start. And from there, nice and tall, stiff core, strong legs, squeeze your glutes. Now we're gonna go all the way up my toes, down slowly, all the way up to my heels. So up through my toes, up through my heels. 10 times through that. Then we can obviously at home do single leg versions of that and get both legs. It takes a bit of time and progression. That's a great start to our day. And the whole idea, let's get into a nice natural squatting position where we're able to have full control through our feet, nice natural torso lean, four chin angles, and be comfortable in this position. So now in continuation of what we've already been doing, we went from doing some soft tissue work, rolling on our feet, working on our ankles. Now we're gonna work up our legs and kind of deal with what we can call our leg portion of our workouts. But in reality, I like to call our push and pull systems, both in upper body, lower body, you can call it hip dominant, knee dominant, whatever you like. We're gonna work on a few exercises that work our lower body, starting off with some ways that, and manners that we can squat. We all know that squatting in the gym often needs a bar or a ton of weight um, across the front of you, across your back, some deadlifts. Maybe we don't have that at home. But let's work on squatting or hip dominant push in different manners that we can do at home. So starting off nice and simple, as I showed you before, three points of contact with our feet, nice and set. You're gonna squeeze your core, ribs down, hips in line, not allowing that separation. Shoulders back and square, relaxed and strong. We're going to break at our hips as our knees come forward, all the way down. I like to use the old uh, thumbs up to know I'm doing it well. My knees are fairly straight, and I know that by having my feet pressing through the ground and my pinky and my big toe, pressuring through, I don't lose it. The minute I give up one of them, things can happen where I slide to the outside of my foot by losing my big toe, or I start to collapse into the inside of my foot when I lose my pinky. So pressure down, hold it for one, two, three, four, five, six, how it may be, and then drive through the ground all the way back up and set at the top, squeezing at the top. That's a double leg squat. We can do that in the same manner. Maybe we don't have a bench and hold my guy right here. So we use our back of our couch in a split position. That back knee is slightly back, not way back and extended. I like to have my toe and, or the ball of my foot pressing, pressing through that back portion, whether it's a bench, or we're gonna squat down in that manner. One, two, three, four, five, six. At the same time, we get that same contact in that front foot, big toe, pinky toe, the three points of contact. And we're in the same timing down. We do both legs obviously evenly. So there's two exercises right there. And the third portion to it, single leg squat with anything. Two, three, four. And if you watch, my whole form sets the same way. We talked about that knee tracking forward, that hip coming down. Next up, we're gonna work on the rest of the leg action, the pulling action or the hamstring action. It's involved more than pulling, but let's call it the pulling action of our lower body using both our hamstrings and our glutes. We've squatted, we've hip thrusted or glute bridged. Now we're gonna work on the next component of that by using something that we would normally do on a slide board at home or at the gym, but instead we're gonna use something that we all have at home. We got hockey socks. We're gonna put them on over your shoes, typically a little bit easier. You can use for the ground, you can use linoleum, hardwood floor. I'm down in the basement where it's a little bit easier, I think, in my gym setup here. I'm going to use this carpeted floor. You're going to see it works pretty smoothly. I'm going to put them on over the top. Just make sure my feet, the bottom of my feet are covered. Next up, you're going to watch as I brace the same way I did for a glute bridge. Palms down, press to the ground, keep my core set. I'm now going to slide my feet up. And you're gonna feel it in my hammies and then slide them out. Again, that can be done double leg or one leg at a time, having your other leg off the ground, bracing through our hips. For the next point of that, we have a continuation of hamstring type exercises or lower body pulling action. We're gonna next use what we did before was basically in our feet position was a squat position. Hips drop down, 
pushing through the ground. Now we're gonna basically break our hips or hip hinge, both in a double leg, as if we're doing a type of deadlift, pressing through, or better yet, a tea kettle or a single leg version. Again, as my knee separates, so my knee are together, as my knee separates, I'm nice and straight through my torso, my neck stays in line, knee return, or from that position from a stork stand, we now break in my hip or hinge my hip, push back through our leg and press forward in our arms. I've seen some great video all over the internet, uh, different trainers, different people trying to help out in different means, whether it's stick handling coaches, shooting coaches, skill coaches, uh, personal trainers, strength coach, performance coaches, doing wicked stuff. The uh, coaches versus COVID-19 uh, uh, video webinars. I mean, some unbelievable things happening all over the world just to try to keep everybody active, uh, learning, but then also to keep people who are at home both mentally and physically well and, and, and healthy. And uh, I thought I'd throw a few things that we can do without any weight at home for all of our, our friends and people all over the world that need to find ways to work out and get some resistance, but don't have weights at home. Now, in my background, I got I got my famous sauna. I love my infrared sauna. I got some kettlebells back there through a power block, some dumbbells, bench, that kind of stuff, TRX. A couple of them hanging from the ceiling for show. But uh, I also have things that we can we can use from home stuff without having any gym equipment. You don't need to go out and buy a bunch of stuff, especially right now and for hockey players. This time of year, we're gonna work on really high quality repetition, we're gonna do high quality movement, focusing on our range of motion, positions and holding, so isometric holding, focus on really quality centric or negative work. And that kind of work now will build a great foundation that we can build huge and strong house on down the road. So a few examples of ways that we can use things at home to make up for things we don't have from the gym. Thanks to BioSteel, I got these great towels and we can stand on them like I am now. And in a deadlift position, as you see, the deadlift position, I set up, my feet are standing, I grab, and now I have a resisted, a resisted deadlift or an isometric deadlift hold. I'm able to put as much tension as I can through there. It's not going anywhere. And I think everybody has a towel. These towels are probably even a little bit short. At the same time, if I have bands at home, I can do the same exercise and now through range of motion. Now I'm able to resist. I grab, I lock in, and now my resistance happens through bands. The same thing goes for back stuff and upper body work. So now I grab that, that towel that I both shoulder width, and now I am pulling apart and pulling it in you see my shoulders are down. My chin should be over my shoulders and over my chest rather than out in front. Now I pull, I'm gonna hold in that position for a count, let's say six. Now let's push out as much tension as possible. Now we're getting a real easy upper body push and pull for exercise using just a towel. You could use a band, I have all types of bands as well. So the same thing, I do pull aparts, we do pull aparts at all different angles. With these as well with the, uh, the towel we can also do a lateral type shoulder raise I'm gonna hold it to one side I'm actually gonna get to a split stance because I love that split stance position now it's under my leg I'm up off the ground and now if you look my elbows in line with my shoulder I'm trying to stay even across using this great separated black and gray to show you a straight line across off the ground I pull and I resist in that position stabilizing through my hip as well as generating some strength through my shoulder. So another great exercise as well, you do the other side. And I'm gonna say from early on, let's focus on doing five quality repetitions of any exercise until you master that movement, until you master the hold. And then as you go, you can add a bit of volume. If we can't add resistance, let's add some volume. Just start off with a nice quality five reps. Now, if we wanna get more sets in, take more time in between. If you're able to produce a lot of force, yeah, take two or three minutes in between. If you're trying to just get a good workout in, you can obviously take less rest time. What I don't want to see is a whole bunch of repetitions where you're timing repetition at the start of your off season, 30 seconds harder than rest of, of an exercise or a movement. When in that 30 seconds, your movement is going to go down the drain. It's going to look bad. You're going to set really bad movement habits. It's going to wreck your training. Let's build a great foundation. Let's not just build a sweat. It's different than... A lot of other type of workouts, you're developing a progressive workout plan to make you better in the end. 
We're not just getting a sweat. 